This guy risks his life on cooking the books for some of the scariest people on the planet. Drug cartels, arms brokers, money launderers, assassins. Who survives this kind of clientele? The most satisfying performances that I've been able to get involved in are ones where I got to play real characters. Your son is a remarkable young man. He has highly advanced cognitive skills. Christian Wolf was totally different from anything I've done before. He fused both playing the leading man protagonist with a real character part. Maybe he's capable of much more than we know. One of the things that intrigued me most about the script was the levels and layers. You're the consultant, Mr. Wolf. Chris. I had to read it twice to even follow a lot of the sort of mystery as it gets unveiled. What are you doing here? In my mind, it was like, well, we have the DNA of a really sort of the perfect specimen of a puzzle film, but with this really unique character that we will be dissecting the anatomy of his life. Ben's character is so fascinating. Christian Wolf, I presume. Mr. Blackburn. He's got very, very complicated psychological underpinnings. All great stories have dualities and secrets. Normally, when you see someone that has autism or Asperger's in a movie and television, they're the victim. But you never see someone who can use those gifts, those abilities, to his or her advantage. And I just love the idea of that. His mind is almost like a superhero, where he can do amazing things beyond. And so it just tied in nicely, because there are people with Asperger's that can do these things. Come in, come in, come in. You have to see this. Look at this. It just it jumps right out at you. It sort of speaks to how we're multifaceted, and even with Chris, a guy who's autistic, who's limited, and in fact, we find out that he's capable of, you know, so many things. That was sort of the key factor. You have to be able to play somebody who is incredibly smart and also somebody that you think could take on six men and wipe them all out. Those two things are sort of at odds in him, and really it's a movie about how he has to reconcile his past. You're different. Sooner or later, different scares people. Victim or not, make a decision. We're representing a segment of society that we want to celebrate. It was important to me that we never looked at him as a tragic figure. The hardest thing was not doing a cliche performance, but also having it be believable. It's very hard for me to interpret why people do what they do. When a person has Asperger's, you can't have that character differ throughout the course of the movie just to fit your storyline. And if you're going to be fair and you're going to be true to that, it's got to be here are the parameters, and you got to stick with that. Autism is a million different things, but I just thought it had to be honest, it had to be real, it had to be something where somebody would say, yeah, that makes sense to me, that he's landed it in a place that resonates and feels real. Since there's such a variance that I just said to Ben, it's really important that we do this together because we have to be in agreement about where this guy is on the spectrum. I have difficulty socializing with other people, even though I want to. I was lucky I had the director, you know, doing my research with me, and it made it a lot easier. We met with 35, 18 to 35-year-old men so we can identify who it is that we're basing this on. We found three guys. The people that I met and they came across who I did research with were a lot closer to me than maybe I had thought. We decide this is exactly what it is, temperature-wise where this guy is. So we would be at this sort of swinging kind of pendulum of degrees of how to play the scenes, and we did that all the time. Ultimately, I tried to strike a balance between letting the audience in on what's going on with him, but also not doing it in a showy way. Ben just got it. He understood who this character was and the nuances that were important. He's an internal character, and that's hard to play. He's got these extra facets to his personality, and that made it really, really exciting and challenging. I missed you. Missed you too, Braxton. Brax, he's this guy who, in one sense, is very much in control and capable, and then at the same exact time, he's completely out of control and spiraling. In most films, Brax is the heavy, and that's all he is. But I was in love with the idea, what if we had that character who's capable of all manner of moral mischief, but we can't help but like. 
He broke the man's skull with a thermos, escaped out a third floor window, took the thermos. Ray King, he's this real alpha male when we meet him. And then as the story develops, we find different aspects as we do with a lot of these characters. There's a lot of depth and some surprises. In most films, you see a Ray King character, and what you see is what you get, but that's not who Ray King is. As his subordinate, Mary Beth, finds out more and more about the accountant, she finds a little bit more about Ray's involvement with the accountant. You're very good, Mr. Wolf, but I hope our paths never cross again. I always look for duality, two sides of a character. And that makes Lamar fascinating. If you do a jigsaw puzzle of a thousand pieces, he's a fabulous little element in the puzzle. And I like that. Chris is a guy who really needs things to be ordered in a certain way and is drawn to patterns. And so the world around him reflects that. Keith Cunningham was a production designer. We would make sure that we're on the same page in regard to creating the look, the feel, the tone, the palette, the visual style, and make sure that we're all telling the same story. After many discussions with Gavin and, and Ben, we talked about what Chris's daily routines would be and how would he be able to control his environments. There's a lot of discipline to Chris's character that we want to bring into the design. Every place that he inhabits, he would create this safe zone for himself by utilizing design elements like lack of patterns in fabrics, textures. Christian is hiding in plain sight. So everything that has to do with his world is very controlled and remarkably unremarkable. He understood each character and the type of person they were so that he could find their world and make it their own. And he did it with Christian Wolf. We're looking at Christian as sort of a metaphor that you know he's sort of trapped in his own head. So we sort of wanted to use that theme throughout the sets and locations, that we use it as a framing device in a number of places where we literally sort of box him in. So the man in the box sort of really came to life there, where we you know put him in an office within an office. And that concept is also reinforced in his Airstream. This is where you live? No, I don't live here. This is a storage unit. That would be weird. The thought of a man who visits a trailer where everything that he holds dear is, and the trailer is inside a storage unit, right? Who is this guy? We had the real Airstream, and then we had the set Airstream. We need more space because the Airstreams are tight to shoot inside. And so we asked Keith to build this Airstream so the camera can be wheeled in in any different direction. And Keith attacked that challenge in the best possible way. That was a special design challenge because that was sort of the height of Christian's ability to control the quality, convenience, and safety for himself. But the Airstream is very specific. The walls and the ceiling all come apart. It was a puzzle literally within the puzzle movie. <laughs> and bracing a lot of those visual parameters that sort of defined Chris's world. His space is very important to him. So the production design really had to take that into account when creating his environment. And I thought they did a great job. So who is he? The accountant. Like a CPA accountant? Not quite. I definitely tried to make a film that was intellectually engaging while also being a fun ride that can kind of sweep the audience up in a story that doesn't let up in your heart or in your brain until it's over. Ben Affleck, he's got a brightness in his eyes where you can see how smart he is, and that really made Christian Wolf come to life. The movie's about connections. How does that person impact these other people around him? I wanted to know what's going on, why is it different? What's outside what we consider to be the norm, where each person appears one way, but perhaps is different? You're just going to want to continue to know more about him, why he is the way that he is, what happened in his past, how has he gotten to this point in his life, and the fact that he chose this profession and the skills that are required to do that, I think are fascinating. And I think it really does make for a truly unique action hero. I think to have a lead in this kind of movie that's different and we shine a spotlight on that and we're like, this is beautiful, 
I'm really very proud of Ben. I thought he did just an incredible job in the movie. This seemed to have genuinely unique elements and to be genuinely surprising. And it had a character that had a lot to play. I'm really, really proud of it. Say you're the head of the Sinaloa cartel. Who can you trust to track your stolen cash? He's capable of coming in cold and getting out alive.